Hello everyone! Decided to do a spur of the moment um, sketchbook tour. I had mentioned on my blog probably last year that oh when I finished this sketchbook I was going to do a video tour of it and I don't know if it's fully finished but it's I'm done working on it so um stick a fork in it let's do the tour I couldn't find a life drawing that worked with my schedule last year at the end of 2022 and I had this idea of hey when I was in high school I used to just like fill sketchbooks with rock stars as my drawing practice kind of felt like a stupid juvenile thing to be doing in my mid 40s not gonna lie and I have no idea how the idea came to me but I thought well why don't we uh, do a mashup of Bono with Mickey Mouse and that is how this sketchbook was born so we're gonna flip through and why do I have the back well because if I had started with the front it would give it away right so that is that front. This is done with an old, a couple old mar markers, one of which is dying. Honestly, I think I've had this dying marker since the 1990s. It still isn't totally dead yet, but it's great for shading. And um, the lyrics is kind of a allusion to the fly where I think the actual lyric is, they say the sun is sometimes eclipsed by the moon. Um but obviously we got a mouse man, rat dude, sort of Bono, and uh, he's a little more concerned with um, cheese. So it's stupid. It's ridiculous. I'm going to say it in advance. I don't have photographer credit. Some of them I can look and say, yeah, that's Antoine Corbine's work or whatever. But generally speaking, they're pictures I got off the internet. So... Uh, I'm not taking credit for the photos or whatnot. Like I said, this is just a sketchbook. Um, and part of it too was I was doing a lot of digital cartooning. Um, I do Noah's Archipelago, that's on the iPad. And so I found myself in a position where I would be, um, you know, spending four hours on a Noah comic and then I'd put it down and I, my brain would be like, I haven't done any art today because, I don't know, my brain's stupid and thinks that if you're on an iPad, it's wasting time on Facebook. Anyway, so this was kind of getting back into uh, more real world art stuff. So, And the other thing I'll say is I did one drawing a day, usually right before bed. They range, the longest one is a 30 minute drawing. Most of them are like two to five minutes. And some of them are like 15 second little marginal mouse man cartoons. We'll explain it as we go. So. <laughs> this is the first drawing. Um, that actually doesn't have a reference photo. It was uh, done from memory and imagination. Um, and in pretty much instantly I realized I kind of screwed up the eyes. I debated, do I move over and hide that in his hair? I thought, no, let's make it the worst possible drawing of Bono <laughs> as a mouse. So uh, very unflattering. But, you know, let's be real. Men in their 60s tend to have man boobs. So there you go. Um, and the I do not smell like fecking Guinness stout. That is a reference to a former Facebook friend of mine. Who claimed to have met Bono, except he weirdly insisted that Bono was like four inches taller than Bono actually is. And every time, first it was he met Bono once and then the second time it was like he'd met him two times. I'm sure if you asked him now, he he's met Bono 57 times, he says. Anyways, he tried to insist that Bono reeks of Guinness Stout, which, um, who knows, they may have been drinking Guinness if it actually happened, or that's just the product of the dude's fevered imagination. I once had a discussion where I had seen some uh, some ladies on the YouTube Friends Facebook group and they were just trying to figure out what cologne Bono uses. The answer wasn't Guinness Stout. It's apparently a nice woodsy cologne that um, with a sandalwood base. And I tried to point this out to this former friend and he like doubled down insisting, no, Bono smells like Guinness Stout. Anyways, so because this little mouse, Bono Mouse guy, came out with a kind of perplexed and slightly hurt and offended look, 
I thought that was an appropriate thought bubble. Here we have some early Ricky D. Rat. I had screwed up his eyes too and was trying to fix it. Ended up making him look like he had eyeliner. So then we had that. Um, and here we go with another one. I will say the ear size mutates quite a lot. <laughs> There's some from the middle of like the summer of 2023 where the ears are very small, almost more like a bear ears, whereas you my mouse and uh, rat ears are pretty big proportionally, so I'll probably complain about that. I'm not going to talk this long about every page because it's 200 and some odd pages and we'll be here all week. Um, so here we go. Now, I mentioned, I think I mentioned briefly the the uh, marginal mouse men, and that would be these guys. Now, this guy, there's no reference. They're from imagination. This guy's a little more Bono. This guy is almost definitely Miles, or an early version of Miles Marov. Um, so we have some missing link guys who are in the middle, but they were very quick sketches that kind of filled in um, gaps. Like here, and they were doing something. Oh yeah, in any live picture, the microphone was replaced with a wedge of cheese. Uh, this one actually kind of looks like I was drawing him more not that he actually had mouse ears, but they was wearing, like, anyone remembers from the 1980s, the really terrible Disney mouse ears caps. Like, now they're on a headband, but in the 80s they were, like, stamped uh, injection mold or blown mold plastic, and they were stuck on, like, a little cap. And the cap was, in theory, felt, but basically, like, paper, and they were terrible. They never fit your head. Um, and they sat weird. So I think an early ver idea was, oh, I'll have him like meet, I'll pick photos of Bono meeting with world leaders and he's just, you know, got a serious expression, but he's wearing a Mickey Mouse hat, but that's not how it actually went. And you know what I was saying about tiny ears? Ah, their ears should be like that big. But anyways, there you go. You've got the little marginal mouse men jumping up, trying to get the wedge of cheese. And another quick one, another marginal. That guy looks a bit like a missing link. He also looks a little drunk. Um, another, I'm going to flip through till I've... That one's... He's not quite Miles. He's kind of a missing link guy. Um, this is mostly marker sketches. Some of them were done with uh, tripless, um, you know, the Statler pens. Some were done, like this was done with pilot pens. Um... In an art gallery planning to steal the wedge of cheese because, you know, most men. Of course, after I started this book, I found out mice are actually vegetarian. They don't eat cheese unless they're really, really desperate. A um, friend of mine who grew up in a rural environment said that uh, if you want to catch mice, she found that they cannot resist pecans. So put pecans in your uh, traps. Um, but peanut butter, grain, that sort of stuff, apparently. Um, and these other guys are not bon not Bono Mouse, just other mouse men, and they're admiring the sculpture of a uh, pretzel. Um, and then we got this little guy. He's kind of Miles. He's not quite Miles. It was kind of interesting as the thing went on, because, you know, these are layered. That was from August, uh, September. I can't see when that one was from, but very early. But... It was interesting to try and get the uh, different drawings to almost interact with each other, like this guy saying, I'll never tell in response to that. Now, here we come to, I was going to say the fly. That's Bono as the fly. That is, I think, from the Elevation video, so 2000. But this sort of a dark jacket with the dark sunglasses, you know, before he went to the stupid little John Lennon round ones. Um... This is what started to inspire uh, Ricky B. Rat, uh, particularly the fly with the shiny pants and jacket, although Ricky doesn't wear a t-shirt and Bono did wear a t-shirt in the fly years. But uh, I would notice I would do drawings like this and then later sort of find myself with the drawing in the back of my head, but it had mutated where it wasn't really Bono anymore. It was starting to become its own character. And I think by mid-March, I had kind of 
bumped that out into its own sketchbook and that became a series of uh, one-off cartoons that then evolved into the Ricky B. Rat we know today. When I say we, I mean me and my three or me and a small group of my friends who have to endure me never shutting up about the graphic novel that I'm working on. Um, <laughs> Ricky, well, Ricky does have over 400 followers on Facebook now, but uh, thanks to the miracle of ads. Here we have a whole bunch of Bono Mouse, Bono Mice, uh, admiring a, I was going to say snowman, but more of a cheese man sculpture. Uh, this is one of my favorite spreads. A uh, couple of fly era um, candid photos and then more recent. Um, little conjuring trick there. I think I had done a reel of this uh, this spread ages ago. So should have just paid for delivery. <laughs> I don't know. It's a dumb little uh, marginal mouse man cartoon, but it always kind of makes me laugh. He's too cheap to pay for delivery and then because he's dragging his cheese he's leaving bits of it the whole way home um another, this would be one of those early sketches because that's from the end of february so probably three weeks into doing this sketchbook and that's definitely one of the ones i remember kind of turning around in my head and mutating into ricky b rat so we got that dreaming of cheese uh, this is some more mouse men all admiring this floating block of cheese. Apparently in the uh, mouse men world, blocks of cheese just kind of float in the sky there for the grabbing. Uh, we'll see an instance of that later. And then this was Bono actually like hanging out of the window of a, a back window of a Jeep or something. But I kind of made that into that he's... Uh, atop of Mount Cheddar and the little mouse men think they're seeing God as they get up to the summit of Mount Cheddar. Uh, this is the one that took half an hour. Um, cross hatching looks cool. I freaking hate doing it because it's so slow. <laughs> Which is why this is the only example in the whole book. Uh, another little marginal mouse man. As this went on, the marginal mo well, I guess it's kind of obvious because um, my I haven't been working on this book really um, for a few months, just the odd drawing here and there, and whereas I draw Miles and Ricky at least once or twice a week, and I'm working on big projects with them. So yeah, the, the marginal mouse men ended up being more interesting than the main um, character. Ears are way too small, but whatever. Um, kind of like that marching pose. I'm going to have to use it in uh, other places. Although Ricky's more of a slouching kind of guy, not a marching kind of guy. And Miles would be pompous enough to do a kind of arrogant march, except he's also lazy or, shall we say, efficient. So I don't know when I'm going to have a chance. Probably be something like uh, Ricky's tiny little toddler nephew from hell Marvin doing a march but uh, there you go the national anthem of uh, Ratland and Mouseland oh beautiful for spacious skies for golden blocks of cheese uh, there we go this one uh, that pose was like a still from a I think it's NPR that does the tiny desk series where bands come in and do an acoustic thing so there was like Bono and Edge doing it and then they brought in a choir, God knows why. So bon I think that image is from Bono conducting the choir, but obviously I made it a little more about cheese worship. I actually did a small clay sculpture based on that, except I didn't stick the little mouse guy well enough to uh, the bottom plate, so he kind of fell apart. Anyways... Every so often I had a spread where it's like, I'm not adding anything else. I like the white space. And again, the floating block of cheese. I, for a while I was posting uh, images of this uh, to my Instagram and then I just kind of stopped. Mostly because I wasn't working on it too much anymore. Having to redraw multiple times, screwing up the hands. I'm going to have to do like a whole sketchbook that's nothing but people's hands. Um... I definitely need more practice. 
and applauding the floating uh, cheese block. And I started adding so your little mar marginal mouse man here kind of almost looks like he's flirting with the block of cheese. Or maybe there's a mouse chick over here that we can't see. Um, but he might be flirting with the block of cheese. Who knows? They might be a little freaky. And there are some drawings that uh, not so not a not so much. Yeah, every so often you're a little too tired at the end of the night and it looks really bad. But hey, that's the thing with sketchbooks. And every so often I forgot to give them whiskers. And then I couldn't find the pen that matched to go in and add them later. Grocery shopping in the mouse world. More floating blocks of cheese. More floating blocks of cheese. Oh, although, well, that's a wheel, but whatever. Air humping the cheese. <laughs> They're all kind of silly. Uh, but that, that was the point. Uh, this one probably I should have added more drawings to, but you know, whatever. Same. Uh, another floating block of cheese. One of my favorite drawings in this book, getting excited. I think the the reference for that was uh, you two got the um, whatever the honor they give out at the Kennedy Center. So somebody had gotten a really low angle looking up into the box and Bono holding his uh, shirt jacket out and uh, yelling, being very excited. And I, of course, because that came up when I was in the midst of working on this, I'm like, that's going to make a great mouse drawing. So there you go. Uh, more little blocks of cheese. Hey, every so often I get I do a marginal mouse band that has a little more character to his face. Or is, you know, older. Who knows? One of these. Somehow this drawing always looked like George H.W. Bush to me. Pono would probably be horrified if somebody told him that. But, uh, well, I mean, he's friends with W. Bush, supposedly. Who knows? Um, this one, I like the concept. I might actually do a painting, something like this, of, you know, a cheese UFO bringing up the little mouse men. But I think I had the proportions off. Because for that size of vehicle, this should have been higher and maybe half as tall. And then this should have been, again, higher, a third of the size. So you could see the dangling feet. Oh, well, again, sketchbook and the ears are too small. Uh, another of my favorite drawings in the whole book. How could the little guy forget the cheese fest was today? Come on, man. It's the biggest event in Mouston. Uh, that is from the reference there is uh, one of the live shots from the uh, um, Vegas Sphere um, that they did last fall and earlier this year. Speaking of drawings that don't look like Bono, I swear to God, every time I see this, it looks like Vince Neil from Motley Crue. The hair is wrong, of course. But the face just looks like Vince Neil to me. Oh, well. Um, and then the coins. I cheesiest empire, emperor. Uh, this drawing, I tried it twice. The pose just looked wrong. It was a bit of a weird thing where they, he's on stage. The drum riser was behind here. This was deeply in shadow. So you couldn't really see like where to bring the crotch up or whatnot. And and the outline of the legs, and then whatever I fixed in, this is the second one, whatever I fixed in this one from, that I got wrong here, I got wrong, you know. The mistakes between the two of them are probably halfway decent, but whatever. It's also a fairly, yeah, February 9th, so that's like the second or third day I was working on the sketchbook last year. Moving on. That pose was a nightmare. Um... It's one of the things at the Grammys, the year that U2 won like seven or eight Grammys. So 
the actual center point of the photo was up here on like Edge's belt buckle because the other three members of the band were standing behind Bono. So the camera is looking down at Bono. Uh, so you get the foreshortened, which makes him look very, very fat. And then the, um, because obviously, you know, his legs aren't actually that short and wide, but you know, um, with the pose, it looks weird. And uh, then whatever jacket material he was wearing was a very stiff, like, over-embroidered uh, or over-patched sort of um, kind of like khaki denim. So it just went thump, thump, which also didn't help. Um, so, yeah, Refer I'm going to blame the reference photo on that one. Uh, better reference material here, but the ears are so tiny. Oh, well. And I started at some point to fill in with the orange decorations, uh, which kind of went with it. I've now taken the video down, but I had a artist book tour. The reason why for that had involved Miles, the reason why I took it down was Miles originally had a different last name. And after I'd started posting, like some chick claiming to know a guy who had the same name like sent me a nasty DM and was almost like threatening legal action. It was really weird. Um, Cause you can't actually copyright a character's name. They, um, it's fine for a character to have the same name as an actual person. As long as the character isn't, you know, deliberately mocking that person, then you could get in trouble. But I didn't know the guy existed and there's no similarities. Like the guy who had the original same name as Miles is not a Elvis impersonating accountant, half mouse, half rat dude. I mean, obviously the half mouse, half rat wouldn't count, but the dude isn't an accountant. He's not an Elvis impersonator. I don't know anything else about him. Uh, so it wouldn't hold up in court, but um, yeah. And unfortunately the people involved live like an hour from me. So, and they, Seemed a little weird. Let's just say weird. So I decided uh, it was probably best to just change Miles's last name. So, but because the artist book had the cover, had the original name, it wasn't something I could easily change without completely remaking the book. I was just like, I just, I just took the video tore down. But that I may redo that book at some point. It was just like a day in the life of Miles. Um, but I had a lot of this sort of stuff going on in the background. Anyways, that's kind of a long-winded explanation that probably I didn't need to get into, but there you go. Um, I think all these pink um, markers were for pages that could use more drawings. And then, like I said, I just decided stick a fork in it. It's done. And now we have something completely different. So my comic, Noah's Archipelago. Noah is... Um, he plays in tribute, he sings in tribute bands, one of which is a U2 tribute band. So every so often I have to draw Noah as Bono, uh, or not Noah as actual Bono, but Noah as a guy singing the role of Bono in a local bar band. So I started doing these and some of these are like 15 second drawings, but I kind of like the personality of some of them. Um, and by the way, Noah isn't just a U2 impersonator or, um, tribute artist whatever obviously that's a marginal mouse man that's not Noah um Noah also has a Creed tribute band which actually probably well eh, there's kind of jokes made about the Creed tribute band he formerly sang in a Marilyn Manson tribute band but then his wife made him quit it because she hates Marilyn Manson and this was in the storyline this was you know 10 or 12 years ago when they met so long before any um issues about Marilyn Manson and his uh, purported behavior came out to the press because I know that pissed a lot of people off and understandably so. Um, but anyways, the storyline isn't that. The storyline is uh, Ruth just didn't like Marilyn Manson and uh, made Noah quit and Noah formed the U2 tribute band trying to get Ruth to go out on, with him on a date and now he's stuck in the U2 tribute band because U2 is Ruth's favorite artist. And I'm mentioning all this, um, probably most of the people who see this video tour will 
not be familiar with Noah's Archipelago, so y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, if you want to check it out, um, I post it on Facebook and Instagram and whatnot. And I, there is a website too. It's just behind in updating. Anyways, moving on. Most dude examining the cheese. See here, the ears are in better proportion. Psychic links via cheese. Who knows? Maybe that's. Maybe they don't have cell phones in the mouse world. Maybe the floating blocks of cheese just act as transmitters. Who knows? Uh, this one. This is one of those paparazzi photos. Um, there's Bono sitting in a crowd. I. Th I want to say Wimbledon, maybe or someplace like that, some sort of sporting thing. And whatever he was looking at, it wasn't, the event would have been out here at a, you know. So he's looking at somebody else in the crowd. Um, and I thought it was kind of a, fu a funny expression he had on his face. Um, and obviously I cropped everything else out. But in the, for the purposes of this sketchbook, what he's looking at is cheese, of course, because he's a mouse. Even though, as we've established, my actual... Mice in our actual world don't actually like cheese. Um, there we go. Another History of Cheese. By the way, that's a real book. The, uh, the reference photo had Bono holding a book about Live Aid, but eh, who cares about that, right? So the History of Cheese. I was just like looking on Amazon. Cheese. Book. That was one of the ones that came up. So that is an actual book. And the title actually has the kind of script title. Only, of course, the actual book, it's kind of like a um, cream-colored font on a uh, darker orange background. But ain't nobody got time to draw that. So there we go. Poor Bono Mouse has lost his cheese or had it stolen from him by other mouse men. This I've actually done as a monotype with Miles turning and looking at um, the cheese girl. And of course we had to have another mouse man air humping it. I don't know. This sketch with the uh, Swiss uh, tattoo just makes me chuckle every time. Obviously Bono does not have a Swiss tattoo heart thing on him. If he did, it would probably be for his bank accounts, not for Swiss cheese, but there we go. This one, the ch Friday night cheese dance party. <laughs> A bunch of little marginal mouse men. This looks like my, almost like Miles practicing for hitting on uh, mouse chicks. Turn knob for cheese. The dispenser is not working. Pledge allegiance to the United States of Cheese. <laughs> All hail the giant cheese. I have used this slogan uh, a couple times in uh, Ricky B. Rat and Miles stuff that I've made including a um, coffee mug featuring Miles. Um, there's probably, I think there would be photos somewhere on my Instagram. Uh, I'll try and remember to put a link in the description. More floating cheese. And more floating cheese and this guy coming down with a Mission Impossible type of thing to try and snatch it. And though I don't know how he's going to manage that. It, that block is bigger than his entire body. But there you go. Dude's ambitious. A couple really bad drawings that did get drawn over. <laughs> you can still sort of see them. They probably show up. You, oh, no, in the camera it looks like they don't show up too badly. Um, more cheese admiration. One of those things I found like the further it went in it's like this is stupid and then it, it and it is and then it kind of got to be annoyingly stupid so it was harder to keep working on it but then it as I pushed through for the drawing practice then it got funnier again and it became funnier and funnier here we have Bono Mouse with his face smushed against the window of the cheese shop 
because damn it, it's only 6 a.m. and they don't open till 9, but he's jonesing and he's there early. King of the Mountain. Kind of like that multiple tone thing that I had going on in this drawing. Just use a step stool. Like, seriously, don't step on an empty Amazon box with books on top of it and you still can't reach. Just get the frickin' step stool. I think these must be like mouse, like child mouse men, mouse children. At least proportionally, they don't look like adults and the faces are very juvenile. I don't remember what I, I was going for, but uh, in any case, they're stealing this guy's uh, cheese halo. And I think I mentioned earlier, the floating cheese blocks. I'd gone to Aquasize one morning. They had, uh, they were playing that uh, It's Raining Men song and I had it stuck in my head for days afterwards. So put that to use. It's raining cheese. Hallelujah, it's raining cheese. Ah. Anyways, so the guys are uh, stealing the cheese rain. <laughs> and this, this I think is... A drawing I did. I'm gonna wear it this way. There's photos and crap in the back. This is like the last drawing, and it was from memory, and that was definitely at the point where I was like, okay, so this like I initially was called Mickey B, but um of course I realized I would get sued for a rodent character named Mickey, so Ricky. Uh Ricky B Rat. Um that was the last like I said, I had them kind of mutating in my mind, so that was the last drawing I would kind of think of as Mickey and then or Ricky, and then he went off to his own sketchbook and proceeded from there. But that is based on a, um, a poster I have of Bono. Actually, it's not in frame. I'm not going to move the camera, but it's on the other side of my desk, right over that way. Um, Bono lying on the stage during the Zoo TV tour, swinging his upper leg back and forth. Um, as the fly. Jeez, it's fucking gone. Well, you probably ate it all. Another one. This guy's happy? Again, he's got a cheese block that's bigger than his entire body. Happy little mouse dude. Not so happy after they've eaten it and there's no more cheese. Cheese, where's the cheese? It's in your belly. And that one... I don't, yeah, that one didn't have a reference. That was uh, from imagination. And another one. And I mentioned there were photos stuck in. I didn't get around to drawing postcards. Old photos. And yet, one final image of Bono Mouse looking admiringly at a floating block of cheese. That is drawn in orange. I can't really tell if how much of it shows up in the camera. Um, obviously went back and did, did some parts uh, outlined with black. So that's it for the Bono Mouse sketchbook. Uh, don't know when I'll have the next sketchbook tour because... Uh, I have a couple on the go, but they tend to be more brainstorming. So like uh, the Noah's Archipelago one... Half of it, honestly, the sketchbook is just dialogue written out and then I just immediately draw it so I don't doodle it. Um, but I will, well, I'm going to start doing some more uploads on this channel, not just the shorts that I usually post here and sort of do like draw with me, paint with me type stuff. So we will see some of these little mouse guys. Um, I don't ha have handy any actual drawings of what it's evolved into but got this this is a i'm starting to do a podcast um ricky b rat podcast so here if you pause this and you care about the podcast you oh actually no never mind this isn't uh the version that's gonna go into the podcast but i write scripts now so we have Ma ricky dressed as a christmas elf miles miles always looks pissed off and actually never mind i actually do have reach in behind 
probably a bunch of noise as I do that. I do have some examples just so that it's in um, in the same video of what the these mouse drawings evolved into. As I stall for time and look for something, so I mentioned Elvis or Elvis and Percy. So Miles, this is a book I'm working on where it's like Miles's uh, fantasy life. And it's kind of an A through Z. So for E, he the spread is the other one has the rest of the pyramid and Miles eating a sandwich. And he's daydreaming about being crowned emperor of the Elvises in Egypt. Um, so you it's got that. Um, so that's a book I'm working on. And Miles in his office filing. Um, yeah. Oh, hey, here's something that actually does really. Remember, I said about monotypes and doing a monotype version of the cheese bimbo? Here, here we go. This is how that turned out. Uh, or it's one of the ones I did. So, uh, Miles turning his head to look at uh, the cheese girl. And let me pull up. What? A Ricky, ideally one that isn't um, isn't too messy. Sometimes the monotypes are a little hard to make out what the character is actually supposed to look like. Uh, all right, here we go. That is a lino cut print, and let me get the back of something. It's, it's very thin uh, mulberry paper. So that's sort of what this is the kind of work that evolved out of this. And on that note, we will call it a day because I could blather on, on and on and on. But uh, I will be trying to get some, you know, lino cut with me or monotype with me or ink a book. Uh, I think these ones that have been drawn, actually, I sped it up and turned them into shorts. So uh, if you look on the channel, you can find those, I think. Um... But I'll be starting to do uh, some more longer videos showing work as I do it. So there you go. And it all started with a rock star, half mouse, mutant, whatever. Um, <laughs> to paraphrase a phrase from Disney. Not that I think that these little buggers are going to pay out the way Disney did. And that's not why I did it anyways. But there you go. Anyways, bye for now.